Remember Stanley Milgram's obedience experiments? The false draw. The electric shock machine. The pressure on participants. I'm responsible for anything that happens here. Continue, please. And the shocking results. The Milgram study is a really important one to bring into ethics because the storm it created played such a big role in the development of stricter ethical guidelines for protection of participants. Might be dead in there. But what exactly are ethics? These days, one of the most socially sensitive issues is the role of genetics in learning and understanding. OK, well let's imagine now that you're going to research this socially sensitive issue. Well, first, we might have to justify actually doing the research. A second key question an ethics committee might ask concerns the uses others might make of our findings. For example, research findings linking genetic inheritance and educational achievement could be used to justify existing inequalities in education. The third key question we might be asked is about the communication of our findings. As socially sensitive research is particularly vulnerable to misinterpretation and misuse, we'd have to be very careful about how we do this. Do you ever wonder why some people claim to see the face of Jesus in their toast? Did you know that night owl types who prefer to stay up late are more likely to be psychopathic and manipulative than early risers? Well, both of these questions have been researched by psychologists. And you may be wondering why. What possible use is research like that? So first, we could evaluate the usefulness to psychology. A second criterion of usefulness is the research's practical applications and value. Have people been helped by this research? Has it improved the quality of people's lives in some way? And don't knock the studies we looked at at the start. Both were prize winning. Looking at images like this might just contribute to our understanding of face recognition. Artist Marianne North was quite a character. Unusually for a woman in the 19th century, she traveled the world bringing back plant species never before seen in the UK. And there's now a permanent exhibition of her work in London's famous Kew Gardens. But her writings also tell another story. Because along with all the colour, the plants and the artistry, we find references to local tribes as savage, infantile and unlovable. It seems for Marianne, like many Victorians, her own culture was the yardstick against which other societies were judged and sometimes found wanting. And this is an example of what's called ethnocentrism.